My name is Frank Andrew Hernandez, also known as Drew Hernandez uh, publicly. Uh, my last name, H-E-R-N-A-N-D-E-Z. Okay. And Mr. Hernandez, uh, can you tell us a little bit of uh, your background in terms of what you do for work? So I'm a professional commentator on Real America's Voice. I commentate on the news. I commentate on what's in pop culture uh, on a daily basis. And I also do on-the-ground reporting, uh, specifically on protests uh, and the 2020 riots. And as it relates to the uh, your on-the-ground kind of reporting is what I'm interested in. Um, were you in Kenosha uh, on the evening of August 25th of 2020? Yes. And were you there to cover what was happening with the civil unrest in Kenosha? Yes. And were you able to do that um, with some type of video equipment? Uh, I use my iPhone and I also use a body cam. And specifically on this night, that's what I was using to document the riots. Now, after the 25th, um, I don't want to know where you live, but you don't live in Kenosha. Is that no. fair? No. Was there a time after the 25th that um, someone from law enforcement uh, had reached out to you uh, to try to get a hold of some of the, uh, the, the information that you had through, through video? Yes, I don't remember his name specifically, but a detective did reach out to me. Okay. If I said it was uh, Detective Ben Antaramian or Detective uh, uh, Martin Howard, would that, does that do anything One of the you? two. He identified himself from Kenosha. And were you able to make connection uh, in some form or fashion with those uh, law enforcement officers? Yes. Okay. Can you just briefly explain kind of how that went down? So they requested all the footage that I had, um, and they sent me a Dropbox link that was not sufficient. It only had, I don't know, not enough memory because the body cam footage is, geez, over 50 videos. Um, but the reason why I wasn't able to follow up was because I was covering all the riots last year. Uh, I was in Portland, Seattle, uh, Washington, D.C., was all over the country, so I just lost track. Okay, so is it fair to say after <clears throat> the civil unrest in Kenosha, your employment then took you to cover other things going on around the United States? Yes. And so if I have it right, you and law enforcement had kind of not been able to connect for some period of time after that? Yes. Was there a period of time then closer to today or this trial that you were able to do that? Uh, yes, I did that through my attorney. And were you able then to provide to both Mr. Rittenhouse's lawyers and the prosecution uh, a full set of the videos that you had mentioned that you had taken? Yes. And <clears throat> So my questions to you initially will be this. Um, were you kind of working by yourself that evening, or were you working with a team, or what? Yes, last year I was working independently by myself. And do you, is it fair to say that on that night you didn't know who Kyle Rittenhouse was? No. It, I don't know if you've heard this, but there's been other people mentioned, uh, Mr. Rosenbaum, were you aware of who that was? No. Were you aware of uh, Mr. Huber? Or Mr. Grosskreutz? No. Okay, so you had no knowledge of any of these people prior to August 25th? Nope. Fair? Okay. So looking back now, understanding you're familiar with who Mr. Rittenhouse is now, correct? Yes. Have you um, had an opportunity to look back on your uh, videos to see if you had captured Mr. Rittenhouse on video, had any type of contact with him in any way? Uh, I have had no contact with Kyle Rittenhouse, um, but I have looked at footage um, to just go over it. Yes. And does your footage capture any, <coughs> excuse me, any contact? Uh, maybe not personal contact, but anything that you saw Mr. Rittenhouse doing that evening? Yes. Can you describe that? So Antifa and the rioters were going head to head with the police in front of the courthouse, um, and as they were doing so. The police then responded. I think uh, they, I believe they called an unlawful assembly of some sort uh, because Antifa had their riot shields out. They were throwing rocks at the police officers. They were even trying to get inside of the hood of one of the police vehicles. Um, and this is all documented on footage that I submitted as well. Um, but to answer your question, when the rioters were being dispersed further down Sheridan uh, towards the car source um, dealerships down the street, 
um, the riders were grabbing uh, concrete slabs. They were throwing them on the floor to create more rocks and to throw them at police officers. They were launching fireworks and other explosives that I couldn't identify. Um, but as they were being pushed down the street, um, they passed car source two. And the riders identified individuals with long arm rifles on top of the building. And they immediately uh, attempted to agitate them um, to try and start some conflict with them, saying, you ain't the police, you ain't the police. Um, the rioters initiated that conflict. Um, I'm Jack Turner moved to strike. He's speculating it's the intent of people. Um, you need to, to uh, proceed by question and answer. Very good. OK. So my question is this. Uh, did you see, in reviewing your videos, did you see Mr. Rittenhouse on the 25th? Yes, and that at that point, Kyle Rittenhouse came out of car source too, and he attempted to de-escalate the situation. Okay, so if I have this right, we've been all doing this for almost two weeks now. Um, but this is the <coughs> car source two or car doctor it has now been referred to. This is the place you're talking about? Yes. Okay, and that is the first time that you had observed uh, Mr. Rittenhouse, is that fair? Yes. Right. And you had said that he had, you had saw him come out from inside the building? Yes, it appeared to be. And did you hear, uh, did you just see him or did you hear anything he was saying? I just saw him. And what did it, to you, what did it appear that he was doing? Uh, in the video, Kyle has his hands like this and he is saying something, but I can't identify what he's saying, but he clearly attempts to de-escalate the situation uh, and he actually is successful because the riders then disperse. During that evening, I know that you said you didn't know who he was, but did you, in looking back at your videos, have an opportunity to observe someone that evening, uh, Mr. Rosenbaum? Yes. And do you recall, just tell me where you saw him originally, if, if you can. The first time I saw Mr. Rosenbaum was when the police were pushing the riders back to uh, the gas station um, on Sheridan Ultimate, I believe and uh, Mr. Rosenbaum was pushing a flaming dumpster on fire into police vehicles that were occupied by officers and human beings. Um, Mr. Hernandez, I'm gonna show you what has been marked as Exhibit 149. Uh, can you identify that? Tell me what that, what that is, a photo of? Uh, this is a photo of the event I just described. Okay, and does that photograph that's a still photograph of a video that you took. Is yes. Right? right. I'm going to ask that you look to your left. Okay. Uh, and if you can play that, can you tell me if that's what you captured? <laughs> um, is that the video that you're talking about with Mr. Rosenbaum? Yes. Okay. Now, can you just back it up a second? That's good. Um, there's a person who's putting out that dumpster fire, right? Yes. Okay. Do you recall or can you tell whether or not that person, um, at least visibly, was armed? Uh, no, not at the time. You couldn't tell if that person was armed? No. Did you see, I'll ask it to you this way, that's probably a bad question. Did you see a weapon on that person? No. And can you just play the video then? After you capture that video then was there other um, did you s capture Mr. Rosenbaum then doing anything again after that video yes he immediately was triggered and aggravated because an individual now how do you, why do you say that uh, because you can even hear at the end of the video Rosenbaum is saying why do you do that um, and right after this event is when they identified the individual with the fire extinguisher with the individuals with the rifles in the gas station and they their attention went from the police immediately to the individuals at the gas station. So what I'm interested in is really is Mr. Rosenbaum. Yes. Did you see Mr. Rosenbaum do anything uh, that kind of drew your attention after what we saw? In the Absolutely. Video? He led the charge uh, into the gas station. He was getting physically aggressive. Uh, he appeared to be attempting to start a physical altercation with people in the gas station. 
uh, to the point where he was telling one of the individuals with a rifle, shoot me, N-word, shoot me, N-word, uh, clearly attempting to start a physical altercation. So I'm going to show you what has been marked as one, I think it's 150. Uh, can you tell the, the jury what that is? Uh, this is right after the dumpster was put out and Joseph Rosenbaum and other rioters around him begin to turn their attention onto the individuals with rifles at the ultimate gas station. Is that Mr. Rosenbaum that we see kind of on the, will be on the right side of our screen? Yes. Okay. So you observe, that's you filming that, right? Yes. Okay. Now, the last thing I'm going to ask you about is, um, uh, is there was there another time prior to uh, the shooting of Mr. Rosenbaum that you observed uh, Mr. Rosenbaum and Mr. Um, Rittenhouse in the same location? Yes. Okay. And if you know about how long before the shooting did you see that? Um, so after this scene at the gas station, there was another fire at a mechanic shop a block away. Went to go document that for about 20 minutes. Um, and when I came back is when I saw Rosenbaum in the middle of the street lighting a trash can on fire with now his identity concealed with a t-shirt over his face. So I'm going to show you what is red marked as exhibit. 151. Uh, can you tell me what that is? This is when I returned to Sheridan after documenting the fire at the mechanic shop about a block away. And this is the beginning of when I see what I just described. Okay. Now, was that Mr. Did you see Mr. Rosenbaum with that mask on that you had told the shirt wrapped around his head? Yes. Okay. And he appears to be walking southbound on Sheridan? Yes, towards car source three. Okay. Um, can you roll it again? You see this person right here? Yes. Okay. Does that person appear to be hold, holding something in their hand? Yes, that is a fire extinguisher. Okay. And does that person appear to have on something on his hands or on their hands? Yes, purple gloves. Okay. Is this the person that the person that you saw carrying the uh, fire extinguisher yes. with the purple gloves? Okay. Now, go ahead. If you know, or based on what you saw, did this person here with the fire extinguisher and purple gloves, did that person react to anybody else that you saw at this point that was walking in front of him? No. Did you see him at this point? Was he, in your opinion, did he say anything? Uh, yes, if you play the video further, I believe you could hear Kyle saying uh, or requesting if anybody needs medical. And the reason why it may not be shown on this is because it's body cam, but I could see this with my own vision as I'm walking down the street. Okay, go ahead. Now, at this point, it appears this person here is Joseph Rosenbaum. Yeah, if you back it up a couple seconds, you'll see him even more clearly, and that is Joseph Rosenbaum, yes. Now, when he was walking down the street, had itself on Sheridan, he was ahead of Mr. Rittenhouse, is that right? Yes, he was. Okay. Now, in this photograph, or still, of a video, he appears to be behind him? Yes. Now, do you hear, do you hear somebody say, fuck you, right? Yes. Okay. Were you able to ascertain or make out who said that? At the time, no. Okay. No. And you see, right, Joseph Rosenbaum running after Kyle Rittenhouse. Is that about as close to the incident as you get? Uh, at the direct time of the shooting, yes. Did you see um, what Joseph Rosenbaum was doing? as he was chasing Kyle Rittenhouse? So I was at the corner of the car source, and the first thing I did identify was that Rosenbaum was charging Kyle Rittenhouse from behind. And then as he's charging him into the car source parking lot, uh, 
a firearm goes off. You can see it in the frame at the top of the car. Can I ask you to stop you for a second? Yeah. Did you hear that real time? Hear it and saw it in real time. Okay, go ahead. And as uh, the first firearm goes off, Rosenbaum is already charging Kyle from behind, uh, attempts to throw a bag at him, not sure what's inside of it. And um, Kyle is right at the corner right there, in the car, car source, and turns around, and Rosenbaum is lunging towards him very clearly, and Kyle fires. And do you see that with your eyes yes. that night? Mm -hmm. Okay. Your contact with Kyle that evening was just in terms of what you observed, I'm asking. Did you observe him acting in an aggressive manner to anyone that you observed? In no way, shape, or form. The first time I saw Kyle, he actually de-escalated a situation. Did you observe him at any time uh, that evening pointing his firearm at anybody or threatening anybody with that firearm? No. Your Honor, I would move, I think it's 149 to 151. Um, and I don't have any other questions for Mr. Hernandez. Objection? No. Cross examine. Mr. Hernandez, you and I do a break. It's noon. Uh, the, I'm told the food is coming around 12.15, so okay. why don't you go ahead now. Okay. Good afternoon, Mr. Hernandez. Good afternoon. Where do you live normally? Uh, I live in Arizona. So you don't live in Kenosha? No. You don't live in Wisconsin? Nope. You came up here because you wanted to cover the things that were going on in Kenosha after the shooting of Jacob Blake. Is that fair to say? The violent riots, yes. The violent riots? Yeah. By Antifa? Uh, there were Black Lives Matter supporters. Antifa was present. This is all documented on video, yes. You've made a lot of videos of um, what you consider to be Antifa and Black Lives Matter riots in Seattle, Portland, D.C., other cities, fair to say? Uh, I haven't made them, I documented them. Well, you, did you record them? Yes. Okay, so when I said made, I you recorded video? Yep. Um, and that's because you, uh, and then you take that video and you post it on where? Twitter, mainly, social media. You also have your own YouTube channel? Yes. Do you have your own independent website that you operate? Uh, I do have an independent website, yes. What's that called? DrewHLive.com. What is that? That's my own independent website. But is it like a... A news source? Is it's it a an blog? independent website. Of what type? For myself. You characterized yourself as a professional commentator. What does that mean? That means that I comment on the news professionally on a daily basis. Professionally meaning you're paid? Yep. Who pays you? I am employed by Real America's Voice. Real America's Voice? Yes. What is that? That is a news commentary, breaking news. Uh, website. They have their own apps and, uh, yeah, website. Other than getting paid by Real America's Voice, do you get paid by any other source to do your professional commentating? No. Is your Drew H. Live website part of Real America's Voice? No. The things that you post on your website Drew H Live, do you also share those with Real America's Voice? Um, depending on what's going on where I'm at, um, but this is unrelated to what happened in Kenosha because I was not employed by Real America's Voice at the time. That's something that's happened since then? Yes. And uh, does Real America's Voice have any sort of um, political uh, bias or agenda or anything like that? I'm what is the it goes to the bias of the witness, Your Honor. Uh, the bias in what respect? I, I assume that people, we, uh, as I comment at the beginning, this is not a political trial. 
And um, I, I don't know how you would isolate um, a per person's particular politics uh, and determine that that person is going to uh, evaluate the evidence one way or another. Okay, I'll move on. Um, your videos that you have captured of these incidents that you call riots, they're very uh, slanted against the people who are rioting. You characterize them as Antifa, Black Lives Matter, rioters, correct? Because they are rioting in the footage, yes, absolutely. And so you came here to Kenosha because you felt that's what was going on here? Um, I felt like it could have possibly been a riot on the first night. So when I showed up, it turned out to be a very violent riot. And you continued to cover that on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday night? I covered it Sunday night. I went back to Chicago Monday and then came back Tuesday. So you weren't here on Monday night at all? No. And on Tuesday night, you were recording video with your body cam? Yeah. You were also recording it with your cell phone? Yes. The last video that we just watched there of the shooting of Joseph Rosenbaum, um, was that recorded on your body cam or on your cell phone? Both. I just saw one video. Did I? Were there more than one video that you just shared with us? Uh, there's two. There's the body cam, and then there's the cell phone as well. What was the one we just saw? I believe that may have been both. Where is the body cam located when you wear it on your body? Right here. And when you recorded the shooting of Joseph Rosenbaum, where were you holding your cell phone? Right here. Okay, so. The cell phone is, you're using your right hand, uh, above your shoulder. Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Uh, shoulder, uh, same as my shoulder right here. And the body cam, you said, was over on the left side of your chest. Mm -hmm. Is that right? I believe so, yes. The video that we just saw had a single angle. It didn't have two separate angles. So when you tell us that's both, I don't understand what you mean. Uh, that means that there's two recordings of the same thing, and that's why I submitted to the defense and the prosecution the entire videos. There's maybe about 80 to 100 videos that you guys could examine for yourself. I know all that. What I'm asking you is what we just watched. Mm -hmm. Which camera were you using to record that? Both. Is that, edit is that video edited? Uh, no, I have not edited it, but it has been put together at the right time, the timing. Who did that? I did that. So you combined two video sources into one? With the same timing and audio. But at the same time, it could also be seen, the jury could see for themselves, if they look at the body cam footage, it's the exact same thing. That's what I'm trying to get at. Don't wag your head in response to the witness's answer. What, you said if the jury looks at the body cam footage, is that separate from the cell phone footage? Yeah, there's obviously two devices recording. And you're telling us that the video that we just watched, can we have exhibit 151 played again, please? Mr. Hernandez, we have the video that was the, the last one played for you, Exhibit 151 up on the screen. Can we uh, play that forward, please? Now, as we're watching this video, Mr. Hernandez, you're telling us that what we're seeing has been recorded by two separate devices at the same time? This is a body cam. Okay. Is there a point in this video where it switches to your cell phone? Yes. Can you please point that out to us? Uh, you'd have to fast forward. Is the switch going to occur after this point? Yeah. Okay. There. Okay. Thank you. So what you did is you took a portion of your body cam video and a portion of your cell phone video and you spliced them together. Um, I don't know if I would say splice, but I put them together. 
That's an old-fashioned movie term from when they used to have actual film. Um, why did you do that? Um, because it's the same exact event. Like I said, you can take a look at the body cam footage as well. It's the, you can see it as well on there. And you've, you're testifying here today that through your attorney, you have provided the defense and the state with that entire incident recorded on both your body cam and on your cell phone? Yep. But what we just saw was your editing of them together. You guys asked for my footage, so I gave it to you. Through your attorney? Yes. That's an attorney that you uh, have out of Madison? No objections at all. relevance of this? Well, Your Honor, we've had a lot of questions about other What's people. What's the relevance of this? I would like to know why he felt the need to retain an attorney to provide video in this case. I think it goes to bias. I think it goes to credibility. Uh, it's been asked to other witnesses. Let's take the lunch break. Um, please don't talk about the case uh, during the break. Uh, Mr. Uh, Bayer? Your Honor, we've already heard other witnesses be asked about why they've retained an attorney. Uh, before they testify in this case. But in particular, this uh, defendant is represented by the same law firm uh, that employs one of the defense experts. Um, so I believe that that goes to bias. Did you want to respond? The only, I think the only question that came up about a lawyer was when uh, Mr. Grosskreutz had filed the $10 million lawsuit, which is clearly bias evidence. We had. There was a hearing on that? Yeah. Well, there was also uh, testimony by um, Mr. Agent yeah, uh, about his employing an attorney after his interview with the district attorney's office. I just, and Mr. Oh. DeBruin, ex he explained why he had done that based on what he believed to be the conversations with Mr. Binger. It, the fact that somebody hires a lawyer in and of itself doesn't make them biased. Yeah, I, I don't see where, you know, he may do it for proprietary reasons. You People have received a lot of his material that I assume he has copyright uh, to. I don't know. I'm just assuming, but he's a business person. So I don't know if he's got uh, 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 corporate or business interests in that. I, the mere fact that he hired a lawyer... I don't see where that probative of bias. It's not simply that he hired a lawyer. Uh, he hired a lawyer to provide us with this evidence. It would be one thing if he hired a lawyer to organize the articles of incorporation for his business and it had nothing to do with the evidence in this case. The lawyer was the intermediary that gave us this evidence. That was the, I presume, and I'd like to ask, I presume that was Mr. Hernandez's choice not to give it to us directly and again, there's been some testimony about him providing some things to the detectives by Dropbox and then not providing other things. And I'd like to probe that. And now in the that middle of trial, right. And now in the middle of trial, suddenly we're getting a whole bunch more through an attorney. And so it's not just that he's hiring a random attorney, he's hiring an attorney that is with the same law firm as one of their expert witnesses. Who's that? Um, it's is it Henley is it Henley Burrish? I've got the name of the firm here, Your Honor, if I could have one Her second. Hurley Burrish is the firm. Hurley Burrish is the firm. Uh, they are out of Madison. And the, def the defense has retained Peyton, P-E-Y-T-O-N, Engel, E-N-G-E-L, as an expert witness. He's employed by the same firm that also is representing this witness. So I think that that goes to bias. So you have a, an expert from a law firm? Is that what you're telling me? Am I understanding that right? The expert was did um, a phone dump. So they have an expert who does what you would describe as when the when uh, law enforcement takes a cell phone and does a, a, oh, a search of the phone. Sure. Okay. That's what he did. Okay. They they employ someone there to do it for anyone, and we use that person um, to do it for Mr. Rittenhouse. They did no legal work, in, as that term for a lawyer client kind of thing. He did it to do, um, I think it's a cell bright you know, extraction. If you, if you asked me to do a phone dump, <laughs> in addition to thinking, huh? um, I would, uh, I would have to go to somebody to comply. 
Um, this is a law firm, Your Honor, that's getting presumably paid by the defense for expert witness services and presumably paid by this witness to represent him. There's a commonality there, and that, I believe, shows bias. Now, you may see it differently, the jury may see it differently, but I'd like to explore this, and the jury can evaluate how that affects the credibility of this witness. But it's, again, it's not something where he's hiring an attorney to help him buy a piece of property or get him out of a divorce or something like that. It's directly pertaining to the evidence that he's testifying about in this case. Well, I probably will allow this. I want to think about it for the next half hour. But I don't know if we're just, if we're headed anywhere that's going to get us something of value. You're introducing on the subject of bias, which, of course, is, bias evidence is admissible because it calls into credibility the witness's, it calls into question the witness's credibility. He's generally just presented videos. There has been some testimonial statement. But I'll permit it, I think, somewhat, but you're talking about his employing a law firm, and for reasons we've already discussed, there's going to be a limit. In fact, I think I shut down the, somebody I was told not to inquire further on representation. Discussion with an attorney, I think it was Mr. Shroff, as he asked about something, and I wouldn't let him do it. So it's going to be a closely watched door. All right, anything else? What time do you want to stay? Let's hope for 1 o'clock. I don't know. Hope the Asian food isn't coming, isn't on one of those boats in Long Beach Harbor. But let's aim for 1 o'clock. Thank you. Good afternoon, folks, and you can be seated. And I have overruled the last objection, so go ahead, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hernandez, you had indicated that you have provided with both the defense and the state with your full footage from the night of August 25th. Is that right? Yes. And you did that through an attorney from a law firm from Madison, correct? Yes. And that's an attorney whose firm is also providing services to the defendant in this case. Today is the first time I'm hearing of this, so I don't have any bias because I just heard about this today. After this incident, the shooting occurred on August 25th, 2020. You posted videos in support of the defendant after that, correct? Can you repeat the date one more time? After the shooting on August 25th, 2020, you posted videos on social media in support of the defendant, didn't you? Define support. You posted videos that you felt would help his case by showing aggressive behavior on the part of Joseph Rosenbaum, for example. I posted the same video that is evidenced today. And in your commentary associated with that video, you made some disparaging remarks about Mr. Rosenbaum, didn't you? What would you say is that? Do you remember what you said? I'd like to hear it. So you don't remember what you said? I have no idea. I post on Twitter many times a day. I posted many videos. If you could specify what exactly you're talking about, I could correctly answer you. Sir, I'm going to ask you a question under oath. I will tell you that I don't typically permit lawyers to remind people that they're under oath. And it's happened a few times in the case here. It's not permitted. I don't think most judges do allow it. Of course they're under oath. So it's actually a suggestion by the questioner that the witness is not being truthful. And you're welcome to argue that at the end of the trial. But don't use it as a preface to your questions, okay? Have you ever posted anything on social media? Yes. In support of Kyle Rittenhouse? One could argue yes. You've also been watching this trial while it's been going on, correct? Yes. And when you've been testifying, you've been referring to the defendant by his first name, Kyle, correct? Yes. 
And you've been referring to the uh, first person that he killed as Mr. Rosenbaum. Yes. Instead of Joe or Joseph, correct? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. Do you, as you sit here today, do you personally know the defendant? No. But yet you call him by his first name? That's his legal name. What else am I supposed to call him? Mr. Rittenhouse or the well, defendant? I can just, I'm going to interject here. I, I do have a, uh, a rule that is honored in the breach, as Chaucer wrote, um, uh, that um, witnesses uh, are to be addressed formally. Um, so that there is no distinction between classes and races and that type of thing. Um, except uh, I do permit the um, uh, an attorney representing uh, the defendant to use a first name because that would be the normal mode of address between a lawyer and a client. Um, I would tell you that throughout this trial and every other, people slip into calling people by their first names and. If, if it's brought to my attention, then I discourage it or even stop it. But um, uh, just so you know, it, it generally should be Mr. Rittenhouse and Mr. Uh, Rosenbaum, okay? okay? Okay, thanks. You testified that you observed Mr. Rittenhouse. Um, you made a hand gesture. You characterized him as trying to de-escalate the situation. Is that right? Yes. Were you wearing your body cam when that happened? Yes. Do you have footage of that? Uh, yes. Have we seen that yet? It's been submitted to you guys. Right, but has it? was it played when you testified? No. You also uh, characterized, well, you, you um, there was a video that was played of uh, the incident at the Ultimate Gas Station with Mr. Rosenbaum and the dumpster. Fair to say? The flaming dumpster. You were personally at that location when that all happened, correct? Yes. Was the defendant? I cannot recall. I was not there. Or I can't you were recall there. he was there or not. Yes, I was there. You never saw him at that scene, correct? No. You also mentioned that at one point you observed a fire at a mechanic shop. Do you yes. remember where that was? It was a couple blocks away from Sheraton. Uh, I don't remember exactly. That was some tires yes. that were on fire in the middle of that lot. Correct? Yes. And you have no idea who started that fire? No. You're not here testifying that Mr. Rosenbaum started that fire? No. You're not here testifying that anyone else in this case started that fire, correct? I have no idea who started that fire. In the video that uh, we played earlier, you are, this is the video where you're walking down the street, you see the tipped over garbage can, the road, the fi people lighting on fire, and then you start walking in the same direction as the defendant. Do you remember what I'm talking about? Yes, Rosenbaum. It was Joseph Rosenbaum. It was fire. it was Rosenbaum, um, furthest south on Sheridan, Mr. Rittenhouse, and then I don't know if you know this individual. There's a Richie McGinnis. Do you know who that is? Yes. And he was heading in that same direction between you and the defendant. Is that fair to say? Yes, based upon the footage. Yes. And you're aware that there comes a time in, in the video that you made where the defendant starts to run. Do you remember that? I didn't make any videos. Recorded? Yes. There comes a time in the video you recorded in which you saw Mr. Rittenhouse start running. Is that fair to say? After Joseph Rosenbaum was lighting a fire in the middle of the street, he had his face covered, and he stopped and started going towards car source three, walking. And a couple seconds after, you see Kyle Rittenhouse walk past the frame with a fire extinguisher. The question I was asking you, though, sir, is there comes a time after that mm -hmm. where, in your video, Mr. Rittenhouse starts running towards that car source. Do you recall that? Yes. And Mr. McGinnis, who is between you and the, def uh, the defendant also starts running. Yes. So, and you start running. Yes. Why? Um, because the rioters were saying en route to car source, en route to car source, and someone yelled out either burn in hell or burn inside or burn it down. It's hard to make out. Um, but they were clearly displaying riotous arsonist behavior um, prior to that. And 
covering riots all of 2020, um, I could tell something violent was about to happen. Such as an arson or a fire? Possibly, yes. What else could possibly have happened? At the time, that's what I was thinking. So you were mostly concerned about running to get there in time to cover what you thought was going to be a fire? Yes. Was your decision to start running based on you seeing the defendant start to run? No. So you just independently decided to run at that time? I just told you, people were saying en route to car source, someone said burn in hell, burn it down, and the prior nights the rioters were burning down buildings in Kenosha. The people that you quote as saying those things, mm -hmm. they're walking down the middle of the road, weren't they? Some were walking, yes. The people that say those things don't start running at the same time you do, do they? I couldn't tell who said it. Did, did you s these people you're characterizing as arsonists, rioters, whatever language you're using, mm -hmm. were any of them running towards the 63rd car source? Uh, some were way ahead of me, in front of me, so I wouldn't be able to tell. So you didn't know whether those people way ahead of you were running or not? No, it'd be too far to tell. So I know you said you started running. What, what other people? around you were running at that very moment, um, if you know. Richie was in front of me, so I think Richie McGinnis was the one that started running, and then while we started hearing all of the noise and people saying burn it down, that's when I started to go run towards the car source. So, Three. so one of the factors in your decision to start running was the fact that you saw Mr. McGinnis start to run? Yes, one of the factors. And you are, uh, you post on Twitter, correct? Yes. And you have a Twitter uh, name that is at Drew H. Live. Yes. Is that right? And Drew H. Live is your um, uh, show that you have, or your, your, your website, correct? Yes, on YouTube. Okay. And um, you tweeted about this incident on the night of August 25th, didn't you? Yes. Shortly after everything happened? Yes. And you were talking about uh, an armed citizen uh, who opened fire on a rioter, yes. right? Yes. And you characterized the uh, rioters as planning to burn down the car dealership, correct? Yes. And it seems like you're suggesting then that uh, the defendant, is this he's the armed citizen that you're referring to, right? Yes. That he is you, in your opinion, was took necessary action to stop these rioters. That's, that's what your tweet is basically suggesting, right? At the time, it appeared that he was attempting to protect the local business from so violent rioters that had already displayed that behavior two nights prior. prior. So, so this is an example, um, and this is, by the way, this is at 11.35 p.m. on August 25th, 2020. Um, I know you said you're from Arizona. Um, is it possible that this was... Arizona time, so two hours behind us? Because um, the shootings hadn't happened here until about 11.50 p.m. So I'm wondering if that's why there might be a time difference. Do you know? No, I posted that. Are you referring to the video of the shooting of Mr. Rosenbaum? Th that's part of it, yes. Okay, yeah, I posted that specific video maybe about uh, 20 minutes after it happened, the original video. And by that time, you had made a conclusion in your own mind that what the defendant did was the right thing. Fair to say? I would have to take a look at the specific tweets to remember what I was saying and why I was saying it. This is the tweet from 11.35 p.m. on August 25th, 2020, which in Kenosha would have been before the shooting actually occurred. And you say, it appears an armed citizen was defending the car dealership and opened fire on the rioter who was attempting to vandalize or burn the dealership down. Before the shooting took place, the rioters were planning to burn down their, quote, next car dealership, end quote. Do you remember that tweet? Yes. And that was shortly after this all happened? Yes. Now, you were also asked 
if you had uh, observed um, various individuals that night, and you've told us about your observations of Joseph Rosenbaum, fair? Yes. And have you showed showed us or talked about all of the observations or videos that you have with regard to Joseph Rosenbaum? Yes. Do you know if you have any that pertain to Gage Grosskreutz? No. Okay. No, I don't know or no, I don't. No, I don't know. It's a lot of footage. I would have to go through a lot of footage. He might run through a frame randomly. So that's what I would say. Can we pull up uh, Exhibit 152, please? And we're going to play this at the one hour, I'm sorry, one minute and 51 second mark. Pause. There is an individual who is uh, crouching on the ground wearing a blue hat with what appears to be some white lettering on it. Do you see the person I'm talking about? Yes. Do you know who that is? I do not right now off the top of my head. Is there any disagreement that that's Gage Grosskreutz? And you were recording this because there's someone on the ground there that appears to be injured and is being treated by medics. Is that fair to say? Yes, because they were rioting. Okay. Let's go to exhibit number 153. Oh, Karen, are you okay? Do you need a tissue right now? Okay. Uh, let's go to exhibit 153 at the 42nd mark, please. Mr. Hernandez, is this video that you recorded on your body cam? Yes. And did you see something that was being uh, shown in your direction? Yes, a laser. Where was that coming from? I have no idea. You recorded this video maybe a, a, a lot or two away, a house property away from the 59th Street car source, didn't you? Yes. And that's a laser coming from someone who was up on the roof of that car source, right? Yes and you're holding up your press badge mm -hmm. because you're worried that someone who's pointing that laser at you is also at the same time pointing a gun at you, correct? Yes. And that made you fearful for your safety, didn't it? Uh, the context of this is the rioters had already attempted to get into uh, spark some kind of confrontation. Um, that's what I testified to earlier. Sir, so then they sir, went behind this sir. building and started throwing rocks at the people on top of the building. You're Okay. My question was very simple. Uh, when that person on the roof is shining that laser pointer at you and you think that they're pointing a gun at you, that made you fear for your safety, didn't it? Yeah, he didn't answer Can you that. Any, uh, question? Yeah. What did My you say? Asked and answered. He, he said yes. Do you, do you recall the question? Yes, because I didn't want to be misidentified as a rioter. And you were fearful for your safety at that moment, weren't you? I'm always fearful in the midst of riots. Sir, at that moment, when that person on the roof is pointing a laser pointer at you and you think there's a gun pointed at you, you were fearful for your safety, weren't you? Because I didn't want to get misidentified as a rioter. Are you able to answer that question with a yes no, or a no? I will say in fairness, I think the witness has answered it now. Fair enough. I have no further questions. A couple. Mr. Hernandez, did you do you believe that posting videos of what you saw was done to help Kyle? No, because at the moment 
I posted all these videos on social media. I had no idea who Kyle Rittenhouse was or Joseph Rosenbaum the night of the riot. And the purpose of posting the videos was what? To report. I'm a journalist. I'm a reporter. Um, Mr. Bringer had, had showed you a picture of the or a video of the green laser thing. Mm -hmm. Any idea who did that? I have no idea. Nothing else. You say you're a journalist and a reporter? Yes. Earlier you identified yourself as a pro professional commentator. All the above. Is it your practice as a journalist to interject your personal opinion into the stories you're re reporting on? No. But you did that here. Where? On August 25th, a few minutes after these shootings, you posted on Twitter your opinion as to whether the defendant in your mind was right or wrong in doing what he did, correct? No, I said apparently at the beginning of that statement. What effect does that have? It means apparently. It doesn't mean that that's, this is 100% my opinion. You had already jumped to a conclusion, an apparent conclusion at that moment, right? That's what apparently means. But that's not what journalists do, right? I don't know where we're headed here. I'll, I'll be done. Thank you. Um, okay, you may step down, sir. Thank you.